recently, we have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. Dear Mr. Massa, I'm just trying to mind my own business. What's the matter? It's just another day, another black king captured. I'm about to lose my brain stuck inside this ghetto rapture. I got a lot of smoke. If you want it, you can have it. They want a hat trick, but this is black girl magic. Ain't talking about the kind that'll make you disappear, but I'm talking about the power of the melanin within. Ain't looking for trouble, but I'ma say this one time. I put two dupes up if you try to touch mine. We still want justice for Samir and Trayvon. You say you don't see color, but racism ain't blind. They targeting little kids whose skin look just like mine. So I'm paranoid, it's a war zone outside. And I'm a black queen, so if you ask me to step out of my car, you gon' have to snatch me. Cause I ain't going no damn well. Had to spend my whole life living unfair. Ancestors got my back and they right here. You can never understand, it's a nightmare. Living in my black shoes by the black rules. You can keep your handshake, I don't dap coon. The white man would go nuts if he cash you. But you all on his side like a damn fool. Make it make sense. We are oppressed. Queen. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. Make it make sense. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Alma Dyer. So the only way we're going to get some of this Alma Dyer. oppression and exploitation Queen. away from us or aside from us is come together Queen. against the common enemy. Who taught you to hate the Alma texture of Oh my Parents, pay attention to the books, the school system, even to your little children. Lies mixed with wisdom. His skin too bright, so he was blind to the prison. My skin just right, so I collide with the vision. You trying to pray to God, but we tired of religion. No savior saving, we got to save our savings. We used to pay miss, how we gon' make the slave rich? But who's to blame and tell me why you complaining? We need a team effort just to rule the nation. Like a bad relationship, missing communication. We missing moderation. They're trying to get a poison to my population. No reparations. I'm getting tired of Satan. We are oppressed. Queen. I'm getting tired of wait. We are downtrodden. Queen. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Alma Dyer. So the only way we're going to get some of this Alma Dyer. oppression and exploitation. Queen. Touch one of my new sons. They show no love for the 
for the queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got... All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in once again to the uh, Queen Amadai Shakur TV show. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur, and this is your second morning wake-up call. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click the notification bell and click the word all so you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. Okay, so let's get into it. Hello, Juju, Nessie X. Leon is here. All right, Obsidian Blaze. Juju said the queen is queening. Thank you, beloved. Bithya, Buckhorse DC, Perplex, Terry Hidden, Courtney J, Queen Sam. All right, Jeff ATL on purpose says you got a notification. Well, that's good. Okay, it's about time they send them out. Edward, all right, Samantha Antoinette, Emperor Rex is here, Deronda. Let's get into it. Shout out to my moderators putting in work. I see you, Darnell. And shout out to all of my loyal royals and everyone tuned into the queen. Let's get ready to get into it. Everyone, please get those likes up. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Thank you in advance. Okay, I have just received word. Uh, thank you, Desmond. I have just received word, you guys, that OJ is dead. Let me pull this up real quick. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. Like and share. This was posted two minutes ago by TMZ. Thanks, Desmond. That was quick work. Okay, so it says one of the most infamous high profile Americans of all time is dead after a cancel batter. A battle, a cancer battle. The former NFL great who stood trial for the double murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman in the 90s, only to be acquitted, passed away Wednesday in Los Angeles, according to his family. Uh, so on April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, uh, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asked that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace, signed the Simpson family. Now, OJ had reportedly been battling prostate cancer in recent years, and his health took a turn for the worse as of late, uh, with him landing in hospice care within the past few months. Now, word about OJ's cancer diagnosis first made the rounds in February when a local outlet reported it, although the details were hazy, as, as was OJ's response to the news at the time when he denied he was in hospice but didn't address the cancer report. Adding to the mystery was the fact that OJ actually touched on a cancer diagnosis in 2023 in a video that he posted to X uh, when he said he would caught some, some form of cancer but suggested he'd beaten it. In any case, the cancer came back and claimed the life, uh, claimed his life about a year later. OJ had been looking frail in the lead up to his passing, including during an outing in January when he was spotted using a cane. So it goes without saying that OJ's life was momentous for a variety of reasons. Lots of good and bad, especially in the latter post-football years. Before that, though, he was a beloved All-American hero on the field, a Heisman winner from USC and a Buffalo Bills legend. Even after football, he was a bona fide A-lister in Hollywood, acting in tons of movies and TV shows and famously serving as the face and pitchman for Hertz for many, many years. Of course, all of that went left in the 90s when he was accused of the heinous murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. His death marks the end of a multi-decade saga of crime and intrigue surrounding OJ, which peaked after the brutal slayings of Nicole and Ron in 1994 and in the aftermath of what was dubbed the trial of the century when OJ was prosecuted on national TV. Even before he was apprehended the uh, by the police for questioning in the immediate aftermath of the murders, OJ led cops on a low-speed chase in his Ford Bronco on LA freeways, a moment that was nationally televised and one of the most dramatic shared experiences in modern American history. Uh, so with that all being said, OJ is gone. 
Well, what do y'all have to say about that? What do y'all have to say about that? Perplex said, you're truly saddened. I feel a little sad too, for whatever reason. Likes up, everyone, please. Like and share. OJ was the hometown hero turned villain. Please pay attention. Well, we see how his legacy turned out. Uh, so let's get into the rest of these receipts. Condolences to his children and family. Uh, no matter what the media has said about him or what he was accused of or any of that, his family, I'm sure, still loves him and still respected him. So condolences to them at their time of grief and loss. Uh, with that all being said, now I have to change my thumbnail real quick to add OJ. And uh, we're about to get into these, <clears throat> excuse me, get into these receipts because this stuff is nefarious. I want you all to pay attention. I want you all to pay attention. It is all nefarious. Uh, the police out here firing at people 96, almost 100 times. Okay. When the initial stop was due to a seatbelt violation. Now, I have a whole lot of questions at the end of the day. How did it get to this? I'm not going to show you the footage of this heinous event. I'm not going to show you the footage of it, uh, but we're going to definitely talk about it. Okay, and so with that all being said, I'm almost done here. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. Like and share. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and play uh, no, first of all, before we get into that, let's talk about this uh, man who saved a child from a burning vehicle. I mean, this vehicle was really ablaze. And this man is now being deemed a hero and well-deserved as far as I'm concerned, because this car was burning pretty bad. Hold on, beloveds. And I'm going to go ahead and share this news report while I'm putting OJ up here. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. Thank you in advance. Here we go. I just wanted to do what I loved. This is what a Woodbridge Bishop says after saving a boy from a burning vehicle and Beltway crash. Okay, so let's get into it. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. Hold on, darn it. My tab closed out. Hold on. Let me go back to my receipts. Okay, here we go. I got to reinsert all my tabs. Hold on just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this. Likes up, everyone, please. Like and share. Thank you in advance. Caught on camera, a man jumping into action to save a child from a burning vehicle. It all happened this morning at 495 in Prince George's County when a multi car crash shut down the Beltway for hours and injured several people. Our reporter, Marielle Carbone, spoke to the Good Samaritan and joins us from Metzar, Washington, where those victims are being treated. And that Good Samaritan, a bishop from Woodbridge, Virginia, tells me he was simply in the right place at the right time. He stayed with that child and their mother until the ambulance arrived on scene and then followed them to the hospital, all the while thanking God. I was a little traumatized. I, I was crying, especially seeing the woman cry. Burn. And this is the moment Bishop John Adonteng Boateng jumped into action, pulling a young boy from a burning vehicle. I saw a child that was um, crawling, trying to come out of the vehicle, so I stretched my hand in the fire, 
and rescue the child. A Dotang Dotang was driving on 495 in Prince George's County around 11 a.m. when he witnessed a major crash. Police say a dump truck blew a tire, causing the vehicle to cross lanes where it was struck by an SUV and caught fire. The bishop pulled over, seeing if there was anything he could do to help. And that's when he saw the boy trying to escape one of the cars involved. I didn't think about life anybody. I was just going to do what I love to do. Adon Tang Botang leads the Divine Word International Ministries and says in the moment he was simply practicing what he preaches. And my mission in life is to save life, is to help people and I put people first before myself. In the video, you can see the boy clutching the bishop as he comforts the child whose legs were badly burned. He tells us other drivers stopped too and helped the mother who he says was severely burned. Tonight, he's thanking God. I wasn't there at the right time, at the, at the right point, at the right time. Maybe that child might have died or nobody would have saved the child. So I realized that I've been a blessing. I've been an angel. So I'm, I've recovered now. I'm okay. And the Maryland State Police say the driver of the dump truck, along with a child passenger in that dump truck, and a passenger and child in the SUV were all taken to the hospital for treatment. Two of those people in critical condition. We know the cause of that crash is still under investigation. Reporting in Northwest D.C., I'm Arielle Carbone, D.C. News Now. All right. Uh, so thank God he was able to save that child's life. Okay. Some people out here are doing real work. Please pay attention. Now, with that all being said, let's talk about uh, this teacher who was out here pimping students or trying to recruit students for her son to pimp. Now, let's put our picture up here on the screen. Like stuff, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. This is her and her son, okay? And this was going on at the school. Now, actress Quanell X was going off about this. So I'm going to share the footage. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this. They had a press conference and Quanell was none too thrilled about it. Okay, he was going in on the school board, accusing them of lying and pretending that they didn't know anything about him when in fact they actually did. We have to be honest and tell the truth. This is one of the most horrendous stories we have ever had to deal with. And my history as an activist, we're talking about a teacher, a trusted servant teacher on a high school campus recruiting prostitutes from her students to work for her son as their pimp. This teacher, Miss Grisby, was allowed to remain on this campus after it was brought to the school administrator's attention that this was taking place in February of 23. This was brought to their attention. But the same administrators, instead of thoroughly investigating the complaint, they retaliated against the teacher who brought it to their attention. When I spoke with the district the other day, I said, how could you not know or tell the parents about all of this? They swore for God that they did not know. They swore for God that they had no information about this until law enforcement called them and say, we're going to arrest Miss Grisby today. Well, I say to Klein, Kane administrators, you a damn lie. We got the proof. Where's the dog? Open it up. Open it up. Let me show these lying snakes here at this school. And we want all the parents to see this. Here's a complaint back in February of 23, a sworn statement by the teacher that named Miss Grisby, that named what law enforcement brought to her attention. Law enforcement went to her house about her daughter, who was one of the victims. And she came the next day and informed the school of what was happening in detail in the statement about the prostitution ring. Who's the teacher that was involved and the young man's name that was involved. And the school district took a statement in the office with the principal and the district representative. And now you lying snakes want to tell the public 
that you had you had no idea about Miss Grisby. Oh no, that's a lie. We got it right here. We got text messages where she's texting back and forth with school administrators talking about what she brought to their attention. But yet they did nothing. The principal should be terminated. And I would say to the police chief, why they never brought it to your attention? It was brought to their attention. We got the documents. It was brought to their attention in detail in February of 23. Why they didn't do a duty, brother, to speak to U.S. police chief? You should do your job now and start indicting these officials at this school for failure to notify. They didn't notify law enforcement and they did not notify the parents. And as parents, they had a right to know that their children were a part of a prostitution ring. And you left the teacher after the report was given, after the case number with Harris County Sheriff's Department was given. You left that teacher on this campus to a few days ago. She was allowed to remain for a few days ago. This don't pass the smell test. All of y'all should be fired. Well, they always say the chicken's gonna come home to roost. So back in November of 2022, Roger, which is the son of Ms. Grisby was arrested, okay? This information was brought to the district by this former teacher back on February 21st, 2023. Okay, so when this teacher brought it to Miss Nicole Payton, uh, Shayna Jobert, Go ahead. and Robert Cabal. Call the names. Uh, was who she spoke to on that campus on February 21st, 2023. Carrie Evo, E-L-V-E, is one who took the statement on February 21st, 2023. Miss Davis is who came to the campus and called the principal as well as this former teacher in to either for her to demand to resign or to be terminated because she blew the whistle on Ms. Grisby because her daughter was involved. Okay, so I find it all so nefarious. Hold on, beloveds. Hold on just a second. Okay. Hold on just a second. I'm going to go back to the share. Now, I'm not going to play that whole thing because it's actually about 20 minutes long. Okay, so I'm not going to play the whole thing. But I'm going to go back to it. Hold on. And so she ended up getting legal counsel. So then when she got the legal counsel, then her daughter was no longer in trouble. They found out that the daughter was the victim. Okay. So then, so when we go from there, we got emails in reference to after the whistle was blown, then we got retaliation. Back in February 24th, 2023, that was sent. Okay, so this email was sent to Carrie, E-L-V-E-L-V, -E -L -V, which is with Klein ISD. Name the date. On February 24th, 2023 at 11, 05 a.m. talking about new concerns, okay? Then it was brought with that response was that they were unable to meet with this teacher when she was trying to state the concerns and also provided evidence about what was going on. But remember, February 23rd is when she reported. She reported on February 23rd to district officials. And on February 24th, they were talking about having a meeting with her. You understand? a secondary meeting. So I just cannot wait since the district officials are here. Y'all are here, right? Are, are y'all here? Mm -hmm. Our cat got your tongue now. 
So I can't wait for you all to come on up here and tell us oh. what you've been telling to the public but that minute, you did not know about this. But wait a minute. But then it was another email that was sent on February 21st, which was the very first email. February 21st, 2023 at 523 p.m. by the former teacher where it states evidence of allegations. The, the former teacher provided evidence of the text messages that this young man who is now locked up in Harris County that was sending to her directly, threatening her. So this was also sent to Miss Carrie LV on February 21st, 2023. And this teacher asked to be remain anonymous. We're going to step out of the way now and let the district respond. Excuse us. Yeah, let us get over here. Are, are y'all coming? Watch out of town. Y'all not coming? But wait a minute. Didn't you and I talk? Didn't we talk? Didn't you tell me you all didn't know nothing about this? You told me that, sir. He probably did. No, 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 no. You told me, sir, that you all knew nothing about this. I demand you apologize to the parents because you all did know. You told me a lie and you told the media a lie that you didn't know anything about this. How could you embarrass the district and embarrass parents with a lie like that? And you left a pimp. You left a sex trafficking pimp of a teacher on campus from February 23rd to April 24th in 2024. No, man, y'all got the answer for this. The lies must come to an end now. Right now. So we'll take questions from y'all since the cat got their tongue. They don't want to talk all of a sudden now. What would you like to hear from the district as far as, I, I know that Quanell, you said that you guys want accountability. They need to wipe the administration clean, fire the principal and every district official and representative who knew about this and did not notify the parents and did not pull that teacher off campus. For them to have that sensitive information, police reports, sworn statements, they left that teacher on campus when details was given about her involvement and what she was doing. I want to see them all fired. And then I want to see those who should be charged with failure to report, charged with failure to report. But that is a state law. And you said this former teacher who um, reported this to not only the sheriff's office, but to the district, she at the time wanted to remain anonymous, but she she did bring it to the district's attention. Yes. What was going on? And with- they told, they talked to Miss Grisby. Sure did. And they had the nerve to tell that woman who reported it. And then her son tried to retaliate against the teacher who blew the whistle. And that's when she made the terroristic threat report and had the text messages of Miss Grisby's son threatening her. Get a short again. Short again. This is this is the threatening text messages after the district blew her cover to Miss Grisby and she told her son, Man, look here, Chief. I'm sorry, Chief. Man, what the hell is going on over here, brother? This sounds like something from Barney Fife. Mm. This is crazy. Well, sir, guess what, though? You don't have to ask me. He's right next to you. She's right there. Why don't you ask them? They do speak English. Mm-hmm. Ask them. There's a police chief for the district. Ask him. Did you know, sir? Did you know, chief? Nope. Did you know about all of this? Oh, no, all of a sudden, nobody got nothing to say now. Well, brother, start putting handcuffs on these people for failure to report because it embarrasses your office Mm -hmm. for that to be going on on campus and detailed information given and you all not even conduct an independent investigation based on the allegations of students being prostituted. Nah, man. And not even so much as that. Not even so much as that. Even when you get any form of allegation in general, period, that teacher was supposed to have been removed from this campus on administrative leave pending an investigation. That's just like when you're dealing with children in CPS. When you get a call on an allegation, they'll tell you in a minute to remove the child from the home in order to conduct the investigation. That teacher should not still have had access to children with these type of level of uh, allegations. They left a wolf in the chicken's coop. 
That's what they did. It's unbelievable. In my years of activism, three decades, I ain't never seen nothing like this. These people knew. Who's protecting the kids? These people knew. And they did nothing. And then had the nerve to come and lie to the public. We had no idea until the sheriff notified us and they were going to arrest her. That's a lie. It's a lie. We got the documents to prove it. We got the emails back and forth with district officials and the teacher. Man, this is criminal. It's a shame. Next question. What exactly is in there? Uh, how many people? Oh, we're going to let you take pictures of all of it. When you get back to uh, the newsroom, y'all can go through it. Just describe them. What, 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 yeah, keep going. Go ahead, though. We're all equally powerful. You have been programmed. Okay, so what we have, we have the exchange between the former teacher and the district, um, who was basically blowing the whistle on what was actually going on. Then we have information with the text messages from the person that is in Harris County who was trafficking those children between, uh, as far as we're retaliating against the, um, uh, the former school teacher. So we have emails between the district officials and this former teacher. So it's not like that they did not know because they did. Mm -hmm. And this is what this evidence showed that this information was already known. How did this, I guess, end with the former teacher after she filed the complaint and she was- They told her to either resign- Or be or terminated. They, they told her to either resign or be terminated. And she's working now in another district. She's in another district now. Was she fired from the district? She, was, she resigned. She resigned. She did what they, she did the ultimatum that they gave her. Either you resign or unreal, or you'll be terminated. Unreal. And can somebody tell us a little bit about how the, the allegations against the teacher, like what exactly her role was? We know her son was trafficking. What about her? Like, what role did she play in this? Well, the mama slash teacher, Miss Grisby, was the recruiter and she was a saleswoman. Wow. She was a part of the promotional team to make her son appear like he could make a ship sell on dry land to young immature girls Runaways. and she tricked them manipulated them and then put them in contact with her son to be pimped and prostituted Man. so she was the liaison mm -hmm. the promoter she and was the facilitator and put like put them in motels and stuff and this is crazy this is this is unreal they had a tight operation she get motel rooms mm. for students runaways so they get, oh man, this is crazy. Hey, Dr. Mother, you said this is your district. Right? Yeah, I feel some kind of way about it because this is my district. My children attend school in this district, okay? And I really feel some type of way about it because at the end of the day, our children all deserve a right to be in a school district where they are safe and where they are protected. And Absolutely. as a parent, we deserve the right to know if we have some sleaze balls that's in the school district, we need to know about it. Right. And we need to know so we know how we need to move with our children and how we need to move forward. You know, because this human trafficking stuff is real. We've seen this in real life and in real time. I own a foster adoption agency. I have human trafficking victims in my agency. I go around this state dealing with human trafficking. This is nothing that's that's a joke. This is serious. And for them not to take this seriously, this is a step level higher than a child being bullied. We're talking about children being trafficked, a billion dollar business. We supposed to know about this. Texas is one of the highest linked in the We are in the hub of human trafficking right here. I know damn well I got a teenage daughter. I will have a hissy fit. My daughter was in the dog ring. Baby, I've been putting my finger in this ground and told it to turn this whole thing upside down. I don't think so. Any more my tax dollars pay here. I supposed to know. Do we know I pay high is? taxes too. Does she have a bond? Like what's her current status right now? Like, well, we heard that she was in court this morning. What her condition, what a bond is and conditions of bond, I'm not sure about that. Uh, how is that former teacher and her daughter doing since she was one of the victims? Have they been the, the former teacher, um, she feels vindicated at this point right now, but the daughter is still going through some emotional Absolutely. issues right now. But um, she's also seeking legal counsel because... She was retaliated against for being a whistleblower, and she got she got an open closed case. If you ask me. But what's so painful? She reported this in February of twenty three. 
long time. Gave them details. My details. And they left that wolf in here on campus, continuing to be a teacher until April of 2024. That's you can't phantom the level of incompetence, ignorance, ignorance, and negligence by district officials. It's beyond belief to some degree. But we got the documents to prove it. Well, you know, this is what happens when you try to cover stuff up. You know what I mean? See, you have to shine the light like like on a roach in the kitchen. You got to shine that light on. And that's what has happened. What's your final message to school officials and to district officials? Would you like to say that? We've already said what we want from district officials. But let me say to the parents, if I was a parent of a student at this school, I'd raise holy hell to clean house. If I was a parent of of my child went to this school, ain't no way in hell the principal would still be the principal or anybody else in that damn administrative team that knew about this. And I would be demanding an investigation by the district police department for failure to report child abuse. Thank you all for your time. Thank you for your presence. We appreciate it. Maybe they'll say something to you now. Thank you, beloved. I forgot I muted myself. Okay, so with that all being said, the reason I think that they didn't do anything about it and now they're lying saying they didn't know anything about it at all is because they're all in on it. I think that they're absolutely, I think that they're absolutely all in on it. Okay? That's what I think. I think they all had a hand in it, quite frankly. And here's the thing, the teacher that came and reported this, the whistleblower, they told her either she can quit, she can resign, or she's going to be fired. Now, that's crazy. And this other woman, the woman who was the recruiter, let me put her picture back up on the screen, her and her filthy son, the son threatened the teacher who reported this. Miss Grisby, that's her name, Miss Grisby. So it's just amazing to me that after a year of this being reported, over a year, February of 2023, and here we are in April, and this woman's just now being arrested, and the parents are just now finding out the whole story. Yeah, this is absolutely egregious. And the principal definitely needs to be fired, because why did they send out a note, a memo? Why did they make phone calls to the parents and let them know what was going on? This is all crazy. But like I said, I think every last one of them was in on it. That's the only thing that makes sense. How is this going unnoticed? How is no one saying anything about this? And the woman who reported it is threatened to be fired or she can resign. That's the ultimatum they gave her. This is all so deplorable. Trafficking is one of the most lucrative underground businesses that involve our children, unfortunately. Yes, absolutely. Over 200,000 people are trafficked a year in the United States, and most of them are children. If you wonder where all these missing children go to, that's where most of them go to. And a lot of these school officials are absolutely involved in it. And when you hear these stories about these women messing around with the students that you've been hearing lately, well, this is all a part of that. Okay, because what they're doing is they're having intimate relationships with these students to get the students to go along with whatever they tell them to do. And that includes selling them off to the highest bidder. That includes grooming them by having them engage in these inappropriate relationships. So now when they try to sell them off to the highest bidder, they'll willingly go ahead and do so. Okay, because they, they've already been groomed. That's what a whole bunch of this is about. And they're covering it up. At the end of the day, that's not the only person at that school or any other school that's doing it. This is going on around this entire country. You can best believe. And that's why people should be thinking very seriously about homeschooling your children if you have not done so already. Because this is all nefarious.
This is all nefarious. The queen already spoke on that. Let me tell you something. I've been telling you all for months that you need to homeschool your children for years, not months, years, since 2020. Now she says the police, social worker, CPS, and all others are all involved in, yes, let me tell you something. This is absolutely the truth that some of these uh, uh, people in law enforcement are involved in it. We already know about CPS. That's supposed to be one of the biggest trafficking organizations in this country, allegedly. So we already know what's going on. This is absolutely crazy. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Now let's move on to the next topic of discussion. Let's talk about it because the police fired at this man 96 times. A black man by the name of Dexter Reed, 26 years old. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Dexter Reed. Hold on, these pop-ups. Dexter Reed uh, shot a cop before officers return, 90, return fire 96 times. Now, here's the thing. They do claim that Dexter Reed fired upon them first, but I want you to look at this. I'm not going to show the video, but I want you all to see this, this image right here. Like stuff, everyone, please like and share. You see that? That's Dexter's vehicle and that's the cop. What is that cop wearing? That cop has on regular clothes. He has on regular clothes, a baseball cap and holding a gun. Now, I'm sorry, but if somebody came up to my car with that outfit on and holding a gun, how am I supposed to know they're a police officer? These are plain clothes cops. How was he supposed to know that's a police officer? Even if they told him they were, how is he supposed to know that? They could be lying. People imitate cops all the time, impersonate them. But at the end of the day, he's not even in uniform. So if he fired at them, I'm pretty sure that's why. He likely thought that he was being robbed or carjacked. Okay? So please pay attention. This is all so sad. Let me put the young man's picture up on the screen. Like up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. So here's what they say. The police, uh, the city's police watchdog released video Tuesday morning that shows police fatally shooting Dexter Reed during a traffic stop in March. Now, police shot and killed Reed, age 26, on March 21st after a traffic stop in the 3800 block of West Ferdinand Street. On Tuesday, officials said the deadly encounter uh, began because police stopped Reed for not wearing a seat belt. Now, here's what's interesting about this. These officers who stopped him were in plain clothes. And why were they in plain clothes? Because they're like a tactical group. So since when do these types of groups of police pull over people for traffic stops? Uh, specifically something for just a seat belt violation. Now, if they thought they had illegal substances in the car. That's one thing. So it goes on to say, Reed shot at officers first, firing, uh, hitting one of them in the forearm when he fired. Then four officers shot about 96 times in 41 seconds. Okay, wasn't even a full minute. And this is according to the Civilian Office of Police Accountability. Officers are seen firing at Reed as he laid on the ground. The watchdog did not say how many shots Reed allegedly fired back. And officers, uh, four officers who were involved in the shooting are now on 30 day administrative leave, which is standard uh, after a use of force incidents. And the watchdog has recommended four officers be relieved of police powers while the investigation continues. Now, Reed's family members and their attorneys said they want the officers fired and charged to the highest degree. They also do not wish there to be violence in Chicago because of this news. They said, we want answers. I can imagine they do. Now, the shooting happened at 6.02 p.m. March 21st in Humboldt Park after police pulled over Reed's car for a traffic stop. Videos of the shooting show plainclothes officers pulling over Reed. Several get out of a car and order Reed to roll down his windows. He rolls down his tinted driver's side window, and then they say, what are you doing? 
one of the officers says. I'm not doing anything, Reed responds before partially rolling the window back up. The officer orders Reed not to roll the window up and pulls on the driver's door handle, which is locked. Do not roll that window up. Unlock the doors now, the officer orders. At least two officers take out guns and point them at Reed while giving him orders. Open the door now. Open the door now, the officer orders while Reed uh, sits in the vehicle and other officers back away and pull their guns. A neighbor surveillance footage of the video of the incident shows an officer walk up to the passenger, uh, the passenger side of the SUV and stand there for several moments before shots are heard and the officer turns back and runs away, taking cover. Smoke can be seen around the vehicle, which moves forward. Uh, that police later radioed in that he'd been shot and his wound can be seen in several videos. Now, Reed drives the car forward several times, hitting another car. He gets out of the driver's side of the car and goes to the back. He is shot and falls to the ground. Officers continue to shoot at him as he lies on the ground. They stop and Reed lies, unmoving and bleeding. Officers point their guns at him and order him not to move as he lies still. This is all so foolish. He's already dead at this point, I'm sure, but they're still yelling at him, don't move, and still shooting. Now, officer, one officer says Reed is still breathing as officers look for a gun. Officers put Reed's heads behind his back and handcuff him as if that's necessary after all of this. Blood is seen all around him on the street. The officers later turn Reed over and perform chest compressions on him. Meanwhile, other officers simply uh, apply a tourniquet on, his, on the left arm of the wounded officer while he's on the ground and check him for other wounds. They also check on another officer who thought he was wounded but was unhurt. They say, nobody say anything. Do you hear me? This is what one officer tells the others. Nobody say anything. Let them know to be quiet. Okay? Don't start talking because we got our body cams on and others could be recording. Now, Reed was shot multiple times and was pronounced dead at a local hospital, according to agency officials. The officer who was shot in the forearm was brought to an area hospital in good condition. A gun was found in Reed's front passenger seat, according to the Civilian Office of Police Accountability. Now, Reed's family pushed for release of the video of the shooting, saying that it was going to cast doubt on authorities' narrative. Okay, so they say, imagine a 26-year-old not being told what he did wrong and having five guns in his face, says Stephen Hart, an attorney that's representing the family. And this is what he said at a press conference on Tuesday. Do you believe he was frightened? They fired 96 times in 41 seconds. Finally, they fire away after... They fire away after reloading their clips three times on a young man just lying on the ground, having been shot multiple times. This is all nefarious. This is a darn shame. I mean, this was definitely overkill. Okay? Definitely overkill. And then they had the nerve to handcuff him afterwards. Hold on. I'm going to go to a video of the family speaking. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Here we go. And this happened in Chicago, by the way, if I didn't say that. Your reaction, seeing that video. It was terrifying. For Dexter Reed's sister, his mother. Oh, Lord Jesus, please help me. And his entire family. What played out on newly released body camera video is nothing but pain. They shot him down like an animal. Why did they shoot him that many times? He's already dead. Why you study shooting him like that? They killed my son and they killed me too. March 21st, 2024. Chicago police are initiating a traffic stop on a driver reportedly for not wearing a seatbelt, according to the Civilian Office of Police Accountability, a traffic stop being conducted by five tactical officers. Roll the window down. What are you doing? Roll this one down. Roll that one down, too. Hey, don't roll the window up. Don't roll the window up. Do not roll the window up. Unlock 
the doors now. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Let me just skirt past that because I don't want to see it. Total, according to investigators. The gun was later recovered from the front seat of Reed's car. Portia Banks had just been on the phone with her brother in the minutes before it all happened. Then she turned on a police scanner at her shop. Listening to the police talking, like saying shots fired, but I can hear all the shots on the scanner. Like I can hear so many shots, so many shots, so many shots. But didn't know that it was my brother. So then to know later on that night that them shots that I heard and then the MLMs going past my shop was my brother was the most heartbreaking thing that I could have ever felt in my life. One of the family's attorneys argues this never should have happened in the first place. There was a weapon recovered in his car. However, it started with an unconstitutional, pretextual, and unnecessary stop of Dexter Reed. And that's what precipitated the entire incident. And questions remain over why tactical officers initiated a traffic stop for a supposed seatbelt violation. As part of a brief statement, Chicago police says this incident is still under investigation, but the stop is where it all began. If you don't stop my nephew, he'll be alive today. Reed's uncle sitting alongside his father. When this happened to my nephew, I hope the police can understand that this is the same pain that they feel when an officer is killed in the line of duty. It's a pain that manifests in memories and pain that manifests in despair. They took my son away from me. <laughs> he ain't got that no more. I don't know what I'm going to do without him. And I just wish that I could talk to him one more time. But to see him gunned down, I never, ever thought that it would be him. I never thought that it would be him. I never thought that it would be him. We did just get sound in from one of the witnesses to this. Let's listen. I find it all so sad and nefarious at the end of the day. These people are clearly just wicked and evil. At the end of the day, that's my question. Why was a tactical unit pulling somebody over for a seatbelt violation? How does that even make sense? How does that even make sense? They're supposed to be out there looking for dangerous criminals, but they're pulling people over for seatbelt violations. In fact, how did they even know that he wasn't wearing a seatbelt with the tinted windows? I just have a whole lot of questions. I think they were racially profiling. That's what I think they were doing. Okay. Swift said tactical for a traffic stop. They profiled him. Exactly. That's exactly what they did. Had to have been. Had to have been. And why on earth would you need to shoot somebody that many times? And like I said, maybe he fired at them first, but who's to say he clearly didn't know they were cops? Maybe he just didn't know. They didn't have on uniforms. You're wearing plain clothes. And here's the thing. They'll demonize people who look like me for defending yourself against someone you didn't know had authority in the first place. Against someone that you didn't know was a police officer in the first place. Just like Breonna Taylor. Remember how her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, fired when they were busting down the door in the middle of the night wearing plain clothes and didn't announce themselves as police, which they said they did, but I believe that's all a lie. What would be the point of them announcing that they're the police when you're wearing uh, you're wearing plain clothes and you're in an unmarked vehicle and you're coming at two or three in the morning? Yeah, please. Okay, they definitely didn't want them to know they were the police. So yeah, they didn't announce themselves. That's all lies and BS. And the same thing in this situation. This man is dead. Because first of all, why were they pulling him over for a seatbelt violation? Okay, that's the first thing. Why do you already have guns drawn when you walk up to approach his vehicle? And then you're telling him uh, to let down his windows and you go to open the door for him? You can just ask him to step out himself? 
Why do you need to grab the door handle? These people are absolutely crazy. And this is absolutely deplorable and disgusting. Okay, I'm sick of it. I don't know about you all, but I am so over it at this point. And then they'll love to lie and say, oh, I fear for my life. No, you didn't. You know how I know they don't fear for their lives ever when they say these things? Because when it's Brad, when it's someone who looks like them, when it's Chad, when it's Karen, they don't say those same things and they don't shoot them 96 times. That's what they don't do. They don't even fire at them one time unless they absolutely absolutely unequivocally have to and that's usually when that other person who looks like them has a weapon themselves okay that's how that goes let's not forget how they sat there you all remember how they sat there and negotiated with that that guy chad for about 40 minutes while he had a gun on the seat of his car you all remember that yeah but hold on i've shown you all this before let's go back to it Hold on, let me just pull this up. Let me see if I can find that video. Hold on, beloveds. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. Thank you in advance. Let me see if I can find that video. Did they take this off of YouTube? Let me see if I can find it on Google. Hold on. Because this is what they... What they did to that young man is what they don't do when it's somebody who looks like them. That's how that goes. I can't find that darn video. Maybe they took it down. I have a whole bunch of questions. So you all remember the video. Those of you who are my day ones, you know I've shown you the video where the guy comes outside with an AR-15 and fires upon the police. Okay, gets into a full on shootout with the police. And they don't kill him. They don't fire at him. Not they take him to jail. Now, and the thing is, he ended up killing a police officer. He ended up killing a police officer. And then after he emptied, the only reason he ended up stopping the shootout was because his gun got jammed. Okay? His gun got jammed. So I just find it also deplorable at the end of the day. Like I said, this is what they do. Denise says, yes, they didn't. Uh, they didn't. They they weren't, weren't fearful. Yeah, when, when it's one of their people, they're not fearful. They'll just sit there and talk and negotiate and call them by their first names. Let's not forget the video I showed you of the guy uh, the young Brad who ran from the police and they didn't shoot him in his back. They didn't fire him not once. They got close enough and tased him. And then after that, they were sitting there talking to him, calling him by his first name, David. You know, David, I don't want to do this. You're not in that much trouble right now. And then David pulls out a knife and sticks the cop in the throat. Okay, pay attention. Now, this is when they want to do something to him. They still don't kill him. You know, just tase him. I just want you all to pay attention. This is what happens. Yes, Rich said they allowed him to surrender. Exactly. Okay, this is exactly what they do. Okay, so anyway, I'm just over it at this point, like I said. Like I said, like some everyone, please like and share. Now let's talk about it because Tizzy ENT on TikTok did a video about how people are still hating on Beyonce about her country music. Oh, they need to sit down somewhere, okay? But let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen. Everyone, please get the likes up. Thank you in advance. I'm going to play Tizzy's video. So Beyonce released Cowboy Carter, her country album, and it's doing very well. But some people have a problem with it. It's okay if it's not your cup of tea. Like maybe you don't even like country music. What's not okay is if you think the problem is that black people don't belong in country music. I'm sorry, but if you're black, you're not country. 
I, I don't care. Like, it, and I wish I meant that in the nicest way. But like, babe, I know you were raised in the country, or your grandparents were, I guess, your great granny and grandpas. But they was picking, okay? They wasn't planting. Just keep that in mind. They wasn't making money. It was getting sold for money. You ain't country. She said that with her whole chest, posted it on Beyonce's internet, and thought everything was going to be okay. We're going to get back to her. But let's get this out of the way. Country music would not exist without black people. If you knew anything about the genre that you claim to care so much about, you would know that hillbilly music, which is what became country music, was directly inspired by the spirituals and field songs of black slaves that they had been creating and singing for hundreds of years. But I'll go one even better. The banjo is a black instrument. The modern-day banjo is a descendant of the West African instrument made from gourds called the Akanting. When enslaved persons were taken from Africa to America, their instruments came with them. For 400 years, enslaved people created their own music, hymns, spirituals, and field songs, all with roots in African music. Accordingly, in the 1840s, the banjo was seen exclusively as a black instrument. It was unheard of for a white person to play the banjo. No black people no country music. But apparently, Ozza Banton, the Indiana State University student who made that video, didn't get the memo. And I've had a bunch of other students from that school reach out to me because she posted this right after that album was released. And literally, like, what, two weeks went by? And Indiana State University didn't seem to have shit to say about it. Now, the other day, they did finally kind of say something about it. They put a statement buried at the bottom of the student newsletter that basically said, we're aware of a video, we're monitoring it, does not align with our personal views. Guess what? The students who have been reaching out to me, that's not enough for them. That's why you had protests on campus yesterday. And I think you can expect a lot more until you take some sort of real action and make a real statement and draw a line in the sand that says, if you're going to think and act this way, you can find another school to attend. Okay, that's exactly what they should get. Okay, please pay attention. Okay, so I was able to locate that video, so I'm going to share it on the screen now. Uh, please get the likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance, beloved. Okay, so taken out two of them two police officers lost their lives that day okay and that man still went to jail he didn't end up deceased 
All right. They didn't fear for their lives so much so that they had to take his. That's what they didn't do. I want you all to pay attention. You mean to tell me that when his gun jammed, because mind you, that's the only reason he surrendered. But when his gun jammed while he was sitting there trying to fix it and there was a clear shot of his head, no one fired. I just want you all to pay attention. There was a clear shot of his head. OK, this is clearly premeditated. OK, I believe that's what they charged him with. Capital one, capital murder, murder in the first. But they can shoot a black man at a traffic stop for a seatbelt violation, shooting him 96 times, even as he lies move motionless on the ground. Clearly no longer a threat, if ever, to begin with. OK, please pay attention. This is what they do. This is how it goes down. I absolutely cannot. So let's talk about it. This is the last story, and then I'm up out of here. But um, remember Biden's granddaughter, I believe it was, Ashley Biden? Her diary came up missing. A Florida woman has been sentenced to one month in jail over the scheme to sell Ashley Biden's diary. So the diary in question belonged to Ashley Biden, who left it along with other items in a storage at a friend's house in Delray Beach, Florida, where she had been staying in 2020. Federal prosecutors say Amy Harris later moved into that same room and found the younger Biden's personal items. Now, Harris got in touch with an associate, Robert Kurlander, and the pair conspired to sell the diary to Project Veritas. For those of you who don't know who Project Veritas is, they're always exposing things. Now, the activist group, which has made a name in conservative circles for its attempts to embarrass Democrats and members of the media, agreed to pay them $40,000 after convincing the pair, the pair to return to Florida uh, to the home and source where other items, including tax documents and clothing, were. Now, Harris, age 41, initially argued the terms, or I'm sorry, argued the items had been abandoned, but she pleaded guilty in the scheme in 2022. She repeatedly missed dates or sentencing dates uh, that would have likely seen her only serve probation. Now, the New York Times reports this information saying that federal prosecutors had only recommended she serve up to six months of home confinement, but Harris repeatedly claimed she was sick or had issues with child care, or could not appear at her sentencing. Prosecutors later said Harris had repeatedly and consistently engaged in tactics to improperly delay the proceeding. A Manhattan judge ordered her to serve a month in jail and also sentenced her to three months of home confinement. Harris will be subject, uh, will be subject to three years probation and has been ordered to pay back the money she made selling the diary. And so in court, she said, I do not believe I am above the law. Uh, she apologized to the president's daughter and then uh, said she regretted her actions. So, so this was Biden's daughter. I thought it was his granddaughter. Now, Kurlander has also pleaded guilty and will be sentenced later this year. He has cooperated with prosecutors and may only be required to serve probation. All right. Now, there was some pretty salacious things in that diary, as you can imagine. Okay. Uh, so with that all being said, likes up. Everyone, please get the likes up. Thank you in advance. I'm going to go ahead and conclude this broadcast. I hope you all enjoyed it. All uh, right. Once again, condolences to OJ's family. Uh, with that all being said, everyone, please like and share. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to double check to make sure you're still subscribed, especially if you have not been receiving your notifications. Okay, and I hope to see you all in the next chat. So likes up on your way out. Okay, so each one, teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember, beloveds, to keep the most high first in your life. Skin. God all in my blood Kings all in my circle You touch one of mine and you're done They show no love for the queen Why you hating on me?
Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans? I got dreams like King Luther, shed blood like Kusa. You ain't helping my people, I ain't got nothing to say to ya. I want all the smoke like hookah. Talking reparations, America won't be great until they give us compensation. I'm like, uh, I'm the hottest right now. That's See right. a bunch of lames out here trying to jock on my style. They be doing too much. I'm the queen, it's too easy. It's like they all in pop fives, how they be talking so greasy. Real I just sit back and laugh while these haters get mad. So nefarious, how they don't want my pockets with chatter. I tell them they can do better. These snakes in the grass can leave a bite on your ass. Cause y'all be trusting too fast. I got my foot on the gas, other one on they necks. Dropping receipts on haters, you better show some respect. I'm never facing regrets, we only facing the threats. Running through every challenge like a relay, break no sweat. It's a cold game, so I got that blanket with me. Now that my people awaken, they no going to sleep. I do not play by my peace, this time I'm playing for keeps. You talking slick, but when I see you like them ends, we gon' meet. And now I got gold all in my skin, God all in my blood. Kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you done. They show no love for the queen, why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got gold all in my skin? God all in my blood. Kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you done. They show no love for the queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got...